Good day, everybody. How are you all? Uh, this is Dr. Nandi. Today we are going to talk about normal distribution. So I'll share my computer screen with you. Give me a minute. The distribution of scores of math section of SAT follows a normal distribution with mean mu equal to 520 and standard deviation sigma is equal to 115. Calculate the z-score for us. SAT, it should be SAT score of 720. Part A. Part B, what is the probability of getting a SAT score of greater than 720? What SAT score is 1.5 standard deviation above the mean? Part D says the ACT math test is an alternate to the SAT math test and is approximately normally distributed, mean equal to 21 and sigma equal to 53. If one person takes the SAT math test and gets a score of 700, while the second person takes the ACT math test and gets a score of 30, then which test score? Test code is better when compared to their own respective tests. Okay, okay. So let's uh, do this problem. So, okay. So calculate the Z score for a SAT score of 720. This is the first one we will do. So part A Z score is a standard normal variable is x minus mu divided by sigma. So my x is 720. My mean is uh, 520. And my standard deviation is uh, 115. So 720 minus 520 in the numerator is 200 divided by 115. So this SAT score, we'll use the calculator to find it, is 200 divided by 115, which is 1.739. So this is 1.739. So that is the z-score corresponding to x equal to 720. Now this z-score of 1.739 means the number or the test score of 720 is 1.739 times the standard deviation above the mean score of 520. Okay, so now let's create some more space here. Then it says, what is the probability? Okay, so what is the probability of getting a z-score greater than 720? So part B, what is the probability of getting a test score greater than 720? Now we will use our calculator TI 84. So how will I do it with TI-84? We will select or we will first press the second button on the top left corner. Then verse key, which is in the third row of keys. Then in the verse key, we will scroll down to normal CDF. When we see that, we will select it by hitting enter button okay so okay. second so this is all with ti84 second button then verse button in the third row then number two is normal cdf so first is asked for a lower now remember we are on a lower we are starting from 720 so my lower is 720 
what is my upper? I'm on the extreme right of 720. So I'm all the way to infinity. So my upper is first, I will type one. Okay. So let me write down all of this here. So lower is 720 because I start from my 720. My upper is one. Okay. And then I press the second button and comma button which is on top of the seven. So one, and then I press the second button. Then I press the comma button. So one, second button, then comma button. If I do that, I will get the small capital E. And then I will type nine, nine. What does it mean? It means one exponent 99. That means one followed by 99 zeros, which is a very large number which is infinity in my case. This is because I'm on the right of 720. So I'm starting from 720 and upper is the upper boundary is 1E99, okay? The next thing is asked for mu. So next one, it is asking for mu. That is the mean of the distribution. So mean is 520. So type in 520 for the mean. 5, 2, 0. And then for the standard deviation sigma, type in 1, 1, 5. 1, 1, 5. Then bring the cursor on paste. Whenever you have on paste, bring the cursor, means the black rectangle, on paste, and then hit enter twice. Twice. So you will get normal CDF on your calculator screen. You're starting from 720, lower boundary. Upper boundary is 1, E99. Mean is 520. Standard deviation is 115. And so this is what you get after hitting the pest once. And that is the enter once. And enter second time will get you the result. So normal CDF, so the answer for probability of X greater than 720 is equal to 0 0.041. What does it mean? That means there is a 4.1% chance of, let me get rid of that. Anyway, there's a 4.1% chance of getting a uh, SAT test score of 720 or more, okay? So let me uh, move further up and create some more space here. So I'll create some more space here to do part C, okay? So here I will do part C. Part C says what SAT score is 1.5 standard deviation about the mean. So I'm doing part C here, way out here. So Z score is given as 1.5. So I have 1.5 is equal to X minus the mean is 520 divided by the standard deviation 150. So the easy way to solve that is multiplied by 115 on both sides of the equation. 115 times 1.5 is equal to, this is the other previous part. 115 is equal to X minus 520 divided by 115. And I have multiplied both sides of the equation by 150. The reason I multiply by 115 because 115 is in the denominator on the right-hand side. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by 115, the denominator on the right-hand side cancels with the numerator. And I have x minus 520 on the right-hand side of the equal to sign is on the left-hand side uh, 115 times 1.5 which is 115 times 1.5 is 
172.5. So this is 172.5. Okay. So let me move the screen further up. So I'll create some space here. No, not here. I want to create some space here. Okay. And so basically then I add 520 on both sides. So X is equal to 520 plus 172.5, which is 692.5. So 522, 520 plus this one is 172.5 which is 692.5. So what does it mean? That means a SAT math score test score of 692.5 is 1.5 standard deviation above the mean of 520. Okay. Now I have to do part D. Okay. So says, uh, let me, I have to move maybe a little bit down just to read the problem. Yes, the ACT math test is an alternate to the SAT math test and is approximately normally distributed with mean equal to 21 and sigma equal to 53, okay? So that's true for SAT, uh, for ACT math. Mean is 21, sigma is 53. If one person takes the SAT math test and gets a score of 700, that's the first test, and while a second person takes the ACT math test and gets a score of 30, then which test score is better when compared to their own respective test measurements, okay? So for that, uh, before I start that, let me write down the mm, part D. So I'll just write down small information here. For SAT, mean is 520 and sigma is 115. Whereas for act, mean is uh, mean is 21. Mean is equal to 21 and sigma is equal to 53, okay? And then I will move this a little bit up, create some more space here. Okay, so let's write the information here. So one person has SAT score, SAT score of seven, Hundred. That score is seven hundred. That score is seven hundred. So what is the z value for this seven hundred? Is seven hundred minus five twenty divided by hundred and fifteen. Okay. So seven hundred minus five twenty is hundred eighty divided by hundred and ten. And that Z score is one point, uh, approximately one point six three six. And then for the act, the person who got a um, score of thirty. So what is the Z score for that? Well, it is thirty minus the mean for the. ACT math score, which is 21, divided by 53 is the standard deviation. So 30 minus 21 is 9 divided by 53. And that works out to a z-score of 9 divided by 53, z-score of only 0 0.17. So <clears throat> what does it really mean? It means that the person who gets us uh, math in the ACT exam score of 30 is only 
0.17 standard deviation above the mean for that act exam. Not very far from zero, it's only 0.17. Whereas in the SAT exam, the person who scores 700 is 1.64 almost, standard deviation above the mean. So definitely quite a far away from, remember in the Z scale, zero is in the center, negative values on the left of zero, and the positive zero, Z, positive Z values on the right of zero. So zero is in the center for a Z scale, right? just like a number scale. Negative numbers on the left of zero, positive numbers on the right of zero. So a positive score, Z score of 1.64 is 1.64 standard deviation above the mean, whereas a positive Z score of 0.17 is only 0.17 standard deviation above the mean. Therefore, we can conclude uh, that in the Z scale, the SAT math score of 700 is better than in the Z scale with a math act score of 30, okay? So I'll stop here today. If you have any question or comment, you can write me a note. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please let your friends know about it so that you and your friends can subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. I will stop here today. I will see you next time with another problem, another solution. Take care. Have a nice day and thanks for watching. See you next time with another problem.